you have to move. You have to move. And, 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 there, and I mean this is, there was a Negro spiritual that's, that went, and, and I thought about playing it, but it's, it's too long and too, too slow. But it said, when God gets ready, yes. you got to move. Yes. Let me try to give. When God gets ready, yes. you got to move. Yes. Well, let's, uh, if you got your Bibles, we, we're a, uh, before I, before I, you can go ahead and be turning to Second Kings, but before I get into the scripture, I, I want to say we have a revival coming up on the, it'll start the night of the 29th. 29th. So on the 29th, I, I, I want you to clear your schedule for the 29th, yeah. the 30th, and the 31st. And, and I want you to do what Janie did. You know, Janie said, yes, I've, I've been telling, we're meeting here twice today and, and, and we're praying and, and fasting and, and praying, but, but, and I'm asking everybody, she, so she said, well, I did, I, on, everybody on her list, she sent them an invitation to the revival. Yeah. And, and, and so I want you to go ahead and lock in that they're gonna be soul saved, but, but you, you know, if all sinners get saved in most services, they wouldn't be none in most churches because everybody already. Let me let me ask you here: How many know that you're saved? How many know that you're saved? Yeah. Okay, so 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 you 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 know, but I, I'd like to be about that double that many sitting in here that didn't know that they were saved, yeah. so that today they could get saved. Yeah. And then what's going to happen? The angels in heaven is going to jump up and down and spin around, and we get to rejoice with them too. Hallelujah. Well, I feel good. <clears throat> so in 2 Kings chapter 6, <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna start there and we're gonna preach till time runs out and then probably a little bit more. But but then I won't have time for the altar service today because I, I want you to know now you're gonna get to make a decision. We're going to find where a lot of people had to move, and when they moved, God did something for them. But you go ahead and start making up your mind now, Lord. If you say something to me, I'm going to move. So in, in, in 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 24, and it said, It came to pass after this that Ben Hadadad, the king of Syria, gathered his host and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria. And behold, they besieged it until an ass's head, a donkey's head, was sold for four score pieces of silver. If anybody wants to complain about what we're eating on Daniel's fast, I want you to think about having a donkey's head. You know something about Gene, had you ever wondered if they had these donkeys' head, what did they do with the rest of their body? I believe I'd rather had a piece of his neck as his head. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just one of them thoughts coming to me today. Like I, I never had thought all these years about why did Mary go to tell Elizabeth instead of going to tell her mama? I, 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 I wonder that. But it was donkeys' heads and four score. <clears throat> 80 pieces of silver for that, and a fourth part of a dung's dove, a dung's droppings, for five pieces of silver. How many could say that they was in a rough place? Now that's what's going on inside the city because they are trapped and they're besieged. They're, they're, the army is there to overtake them. And, and then outside the gates, it had been bad to have been inside that, that place right there, but at least you had community. And, and, and it had got to the place where they was eating their children is it, it, how bad things had got. But outside the walls, it was even worse because they had no protection from them outside the walls. And, and then there's these, go, come on down here so, so you can see it. You're, in, in 2 Kings chapter 7 and verse 3, 2 Kings 7 and 3, and there were four leprous men. And, 
at the entering of the gates. They wasn't in the gates. They was at the entering of the gates. They wouldn't let them in the gates. They was not considered welcome inside the gates. They had leprosies. They, they were at the place where parts was falling from their body. Their body was literally rotting away. They was walking dead men. And, and, and they, they, they were there at the entering of the gates and they said one to another, why sit we here? If we ever get to a place where we say, why sit we here? There's help up there, why sit we here? Oh Lord, until we die. For if we say, we shall enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. <clears throat> I'm trying to. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore, come. Let it fall unto the host of the Syrians, and if they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. We ain't got nothing to lose, boy. Let me, let me talk in Tennessee talk. We ain't got nothing to lose. We can either go into the city where they don't want us and we can die there, or we can go down here, and who knows if they just might have mercy on us. But if not, all we're going to do is die. But if you don't have no food and you got leprosy today, one thing for sure, you're going to have to do something or you're going to die. Amen. Now, it would have been great, Jerry, if it said, now this, here where it were, the apostle and the prophet and the pastor and the teacher. And they come to this conclusion, we are going down to the enemy's camp. Now, these are just four regular people hurting suffering people that decided it's time to move. Yeah. Uh, you, they could have been wrapped up on how bad their situation was. They could have been, they could have just sat there, well, you know, I'm, you know, I believe I'm hurting worse than you're hurting. I mean, you still got this and, and mine's gone and, and, and look, look how much worse. My pain's worse. No, 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 he wasn't doing nothing. He said, we Got to move. So, so look what happened here. Look what happened here. <clears throat> he said, so they rose up in the twilight to go. They decided, I'm not sitting here till I die. Into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost parts of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. And why was there no man there? Well, the next verse explains that. For the Lord had made the host of Syria to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horsemen and even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel has hired against us the king of the Hittites and the king of the Egyptians have come unto us. <clears throat> and I've heard preachers preach that <clears throat> as those boys was going down, that God amplified the sound of that, and, and that's what they heard. That's good, that may be, but I've got a different philosophy for you today. <clears throat> <clears throat> this, uh, back up into, hold your place, Arco. we're going to come back, but in uh, 2 Kings 6, up in the earlier part of that verse, <clears throat> before all this took place, uh, will be about uh, verse. Thank you, sir. Let me tell you, <clears throat> Daniel explain what goes on with my voice. I don't stand here and hum. I, I sing. They got microphones. I sing. And if you listen, I'm as loud as they are a lot of time because I sing. 
and, and I want to give, I want to praise the Lord with everything in me. I want to give him all I got. So if I squeak a little bit when I get up to preach, I don't care. I done been in the presence of the Lord and praising him. And he'll do you good to squeak a little bit. But, but in, in 2 Kings chapter 6, and, and we'll find there, we'll pick up in, uh, oh, about verse 15, I guess. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, At last, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not. I mean, he's looking at, at, at a host that was coming up against them and here just two of them standing right there. And he said, fear not, for they be they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Yes. And now, Greg, if it had been me, I'd been saying, see, one, two. And I believe that's what the little boy was doing too, the, the, the servant was doing. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened his eyes and the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountains was full of horses and chariots and a fire round about Elijah. So all the way around every place he looked was horses of chariots and fire. So I believe what happened when those boys said, well, let's just go on down there. The Lord dispatched the host of heaven and they just took a run about by where they were. They, were, they weren't hearing Egyptians. They were hearing the horses of chariots of fire moving through there. Now, that may, I don't know, but that helped me to know that, to believe that. Uh, this guy... Uh, who, who's uh, the praise and worship leader that, that used to be, you all go to his church sometime, you go to Nashville, uh, that died. And they had him on the operating table, had to take his heart out. And I, I heard him say that, he, 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 and he's giving his testimony, he said, he saw the host of angels. He said, they're not regular. He said, they're about 11 feet tall. So I guess when they come marching through right there, I guess it would have been, it made a little bit of noise. But here they were down there. These leopard boys thought, I'm not going to sit here till I die. I'm going off down in that direction and see what happened. And God sent a host of angels, I believe, and, and, and they made that noise and they cleared out. So here are these poor that could have sat there and had a pity party. The church has too many pity parties. <laughs> I said, the church has too many pity parties. You, you know, what we need to do is say, I'm not going to sit here any longer. I'm not sitting here in this state of sickness. I'm not sitting here in this state of unbelief. I'm not sitting here in my sorrow. I'm not sitting here depressed. I'm not sitting here bound. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move. Well, so we got down there. They, they had plenty. And, and they could have sat there and gorged it all upon themselves, but they thought this ain't right. So they went from extremely poor to had nothing to they had abundance, but their heart was right. So they went back and took it and, and word back to the king. And, and the whole city was saved because of four lepers yes. that decided to move. Yes. Uh, oh, Lord. <clears throat> Back up, back up a little bit more. Let's go back to first, first Kings. First Kings, verse chapter seventeen. <clears throat> you know how that Ahab and, and and Jezebel had the nation so so wicked. Uh, it was really bad. But it, it, it just, everybody keep this in mind, we're one heartbeat away from everything changing. We're one heartbeat away from everything changing. 
Well, I mean, I don't know, probably a twinkling is quicker than a heartbeat, but you know, it's going to change in the twinkling of an eye. We, we know that. But I'm, I'm telling you just, you, you, I'm going to show you in a little while, one heartbeat can make a whole difference in, a, in the whole situation. So, so it, it, looked, it looked bad in their days. And then Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Abraham, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be new, dew nor rain these days, but according to my word. He had the power of his tongue working. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Now, now he did what the Lord told him to do, and I've always struggled with this right here, but I'm glad he moved. He said, <clears throat> And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cheweth that is before Jordan. It shall come to pass that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Now, he could have thought, well, that's good, Lord. I'm glad you provided, but I'm going to try to work this out. No, he didn't do that. He had to move. So he goes down there, and God does a supernatural act. He has a bird that would ordinarily eat up all that stuff for himself, bring the provision to the man of God because he went to where the Lord told him. Amen. I hope I can. I'm losing. <sighs> Well, so you think everything's going to be good? He said, and he did. <clears throat> so he did. And according to the word of the Lord, and he went and dwelled by the brook Cheerith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evenings, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there was no rain. Why there was no rain? Because he spoke that there would be no rain. Now, I want to point out something else in case I don't get this later on. He prayed one prayer and God closed up the heavens and it didn't rain. But when he got ready to release the rain, Nina, Nina, he had to pray not one time, not two times, not three times, not four times, not five times, not six times, but on the seventh time, Brother Jerry, you know, they saw the cloud about the size of a man's hand. So Elijah had to move. And, and now he's down there where it is and now the brook's drying up. But God had a plan. And, and verse eight said, and the word of the Lord came to him saying, arise and get thee to Zarephath, which belonged to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow woman was gathering sticks and he called her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water it's, we got to water because you prayed, but she didn't say that, in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal and a barrel and a little oil and a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go and dress for me and my son and we may eat and die. And Elijah said, fear not. Boy, it's always good when you're in the mess for somebody that's got authority to say, fear not, right? Fear not. Hallelujah. Fear not. Fear not. And do as thou hast said. Make me thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, now, I don't read where God said that down there and told him that. He was speaking under the anointing. He said, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. So she went. Now, he had to do something to get down there. She had to do something now. She could have went and gathered a stick, and she could have gathered a stick for her and her son, made that little cake of flour, and could have eaten and died. But because she decided to do something and to move, she moved because she moved and did what he said. He said, and she came and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days until the rain came. The rain came when God finally released Elijah, and Elijah went 
and, and prayed. And of course, it, we had to get rid of all the sin first. They, the prophets of Baal and the prophets of the Grove and, and all this stuff. But, but then he's up there on that mountaintop. And, and when he's up on that mountaintop and he prayed for that seventh time, and, and, and he said, I see the, the size of a cloud about the size of a man's hand. And Jerry, you're a horseman. Can you imagine a man out running a horse? The king's horse, by the way, not just any old nag. I mean, there's some horses around. I can probably outrun right now. <clears throat> you know. Y'all laugh because you don't believe it. But I mean, if they got three legs or something, you know, I mean, they could be something. But this is the king's horses. And God anointed him, and he outrun them. It wasn't a mile. It was a long run back down. He outrun them all the way back down. What he had to do, he had to move. Well, let me, I'll, I'll, I'll cut it. I won't, I won't give you all the scripture. Remember when, when Naaman was down there and, and, and he, it, it gives all his credentials and how great he was and he was a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. And here, here's something else. We were to preach sometime about that little, uh, little girl. I, I had never heard nobody preach much about the little girl. She was in bondage. She was in a, in a mess herself. If I'd been here, I'd be, I'd been crying out to God, God, how come I'm down here? I mean, look at me. I know you. I'm, I'm, I know who you are, and, I, and I'm down here. But I don't know what she's doing. She said, oh, if, if you would just go the, to the man of God, the God that he serves can heal you of your leprosy. Amen. She might have been in a, in a mess, but she was thinking about somebody else. And so Naaman come down with all his pop and, and all his strut and all his show and, and he was, his feelings was hurt because the man of God didn't even come out to him just to go dip yourself seven times in Jordan. Yeah. He said, well, why, why do I want to do that? And so his servants had to speak to him. But when he went, when he moved, when he went down there and he dipped himself one time, two times, I knew this wasn't going to work, three times, I told you I should have went down the Mother River, four times. I ain't said anything there five times. This is a waste of time. Six times. Hallelujah. Everything was made whole. He moved. Jensen also said this this morning, and as I was listening to him, his, the, the, I promised I wouldn't say anything about fasting, but I told you last week I lied. <clears throat> So I'm gonna lie again today and do it again just a little bit. When he was 19 years old, God called him at 19 and told him to go down and he went down and rented a, a hotel room at 19. God help our young people, these that we're raising, let them, let them come with this kind of attitude. At 19, he went down and rented him a hotel room, not to party, but he fasted three days and three nights before the Lord, and the Lord called him to preach. He said, on a fast is where you'll hear the call. And he said, and it is just him, he said, I don't know where this come from, but call is where you see all. Amen. You get to see all that God, so it's during fasting. And, and I had, I'd never tied that back this, but my wife will attest to this back when, when we was running the truck, I was happy. I was a giver at, at Highland Hills Church of God. And God would use me in the gift of giving. And, and we was joyful and, and serving the Lord with joy. And, and, and Psalm 51 come up off the page. Have you ever had the word of God slap you in the face? Gene, you ever had the word, I mean, just slap you in the face? Amen. And he said, create within me a clean heart. And I thought, God, I've got a clean heart. I wasn't cheating on my wife or my taxes. I, I, but I knew, and, and I just pushed back my plate, and I began, I, the pastor didn't call the fast, and I was just crying. I, I said, oh, Lord, I'll do anything if you just give me a clean heart. And, and, and I was struggling, and I was struggling, and, and, and I made up my mind I was going to fast till he spoke to me. And, and I was about 20-some days into this fast. We was in the trucking business back that day, and, and I had, this was 86 87 or it, I had this new Peterbilt. Back in those days, a conventional Peterbilt was a big deal, and I had eight of them. And, and so I took one of those Peterbilt with a load going to Chino, California. 
And if you don't, if, if you're not eating and you're not sleeping, you can get some trucking done. So I cried all the way to California. Oh, God. I mean, Jerry, I, I felt like I was going to die if he didn't speak to me. I got there and I still had a little girl named Chotsey was a shipping clerk where I delivered to. I let her to Jesus while I was there <laughs> on that workplace. I come out that night and there was, a, there was an earthquake that hit behind me as, as, out, as I come out of California. But on the way back, the Lord said, pursue your minister's license. Well, I'd already told him, I'll go to Africa, I'll go to India, I'll do anything if you just give me a, a clean heart. So my call came during the fasting, and I didn't see all that God meant for me. But for those of you that, that are seeking the Lord and fasting, if you're not, it's not too late to get in. There's nothing magic about 21.